Good morning, and welcome everybody to ASI's Tuesday morning radio show. We have a whole new crew in the zoo today. <laughs> Bunch of animals. <laughs> Start. <laughs> Good. Good, Chris. Starting with Michael Kelly. He is our marketing copywriter. Is that correct? That's correct. And also one of the last comics standing in a Philadelphia comedy uh, contest. That's also great. I'm also funny. Wow. <laughs> He's also funny. We'll see. Well, you better we'll, prove we'll it We'll be today. the judge of that. <laughs> yeah. oh. But thanks for joining us Fine, today. Fine. It's on. We are <laughs> taking this off the rails. <laughs> and next we have Chris Rubo, who is Advantages Senior Writer. Much to my happiness. <laughs> He's very good at what he does. He's not Welcome. so happy. <laughs> oh. Checks in the mail, Kathy. Okay. In the mail. All right. Mm. And next we have my favorite managing oh. editor, Joni Chaikin. How are you doing, Joan? Good. Welcome good. aboard. And finally, last but not least, we have CJ Mitica. No, it's least. It's least. Let's be honest. <laughs> Who is our wearables I'm glad, editor. I'm glad you're down there. Hey, so we got, we got all writer people at the table right now, right? I mean, well, I guess you always yeah. do. But yeah. So am I alone in thinking that it's really weird that coward doesn't mean heading to a cow? Cow oh, cow herd? Cow coward. 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 Like, oh. homeward. Like, hmm. Okay, that's the interesting question of the day. If you <laughs> call in now. <laughs> call you, in call you won't get anything we for it. We're not giving you a visa call card. In topics. <laughs> okay, <laughs> first we're going to get a lineup of topics from Chris. Oh, that's my responsibility. Yeah, so we're going to have someone call in from the uh, Power Summit today. I'm um, not sure who, but stay tuned. Um, we're going to have seven pieces of career advice from Michael. Uh, CJ is going to give you secret weapons that every marketer needs to know. I'm going to talk about five questions you need to ask yourself when your marketing is not working. Joan's going to tell us five ways to write better emails. Michael is then going to tell us nine things successful people won't do. Joan's going to tell us ways to make today amazing. Joan, I, I'm looking forward to that one. Me too. Hmm. And then I'm going to tell you seven lessons from the richest people in the world. I seriously need to make today amazing. So <laughs> Was that a Dr. Evil <laughs> yes, pinky? Yes, it sure was. <laughs> All right, so first we have our call-in question. How do I deal with annoying coworkers and customers? Okay, we should have a field day with this one, don't you agree? <laughs> uh, we d already have two callers on the line, but feel free to call in if you have any insights or advice or a question for us. On line two, we have Angela. Hello, Angela. Hi, how are you guys? Great. What's your question today or your, or your insight on this topic? Well, I have a question for you, and it's been um, it's been kind of a challenge recently. So I'm hoping you can help me. Um, I have two employees, and they're always snapping at each other, and they don't work very well together. But the issue I'm having is that they're each very good on their own. Um, when they're not together, they're great. So I was wondering how I should address this and how I can make the workplace a little more civilized and less tense when they're together. Start with a taser. Just whenever they start <laughs> to fight, just bring fight the taser club. out. Good Two advice. Words. Good advice. Well, I would say um, even if they're not working together, you have to get them together in your office and speak with them both at the same time and let them hash things out because even if they're not on a team or working together, they're still obviously causing um, tenseness in the department. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to do that. Um, if you are the owner, that's your job. But if you do have an HR department, you might want to get them involved because they, mm -hmm. they have good insights on these kind of things. Yeah, depending on your budget too. I mean, this would cost you money, but you, you can have professionals who can come in and who mm -hmm. can and who can help them, you know, s psychological professionals, help them work through their, some of the issues they might be having and, 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 and just even teach them how to communicate better. Correct. Yeah. Okay, great. Hopefully that helps you, Angela. Yeah, also, thank you. I oh, CJ has I just want to add oh. one, one thing as well, which is that, um, you know, obviously, like, if, if there's, you know, if the coworkers are butting heads, then it, it can be counterproductive. But in a lot, sometimes, you know, it can, be, it can make it a sort of more competitive environment. You know, if, they're, true. if there's an adversarial relationship, then they're, they're pushing each other. And maybe, maybe that comes to a head sometimes. But other times, especially with salespeople, you know, that can drive them to, to be better. So it's not always necessarily – you know, a bad thing, but you have to just, you know, gauge it and see when it, it can take a turn. For so ferme points. ferment the discontent. Yes. Is what CJ said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's Very a good, T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Angela. Um, next on line three, we have Blake. Hello, Blake. Hello, everybody. <laughs> you sound really happy. Oh, Blake. List. Blake. Reach for that second cup of coffee, man. I, I, get, I got the ASIB list. <laughs> all right. I didn't get lead, lead, oh, lead, hey. lead in. Hey, but, all right. Well, well, let's see what you got then. All right, You're I'll not give getting you a any gifts. Well, who are we kidding? Right. The <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not fair. Just kiss that visa. You didn't have to buy. take my call. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, give us your question. I mean, here's my, it's my, it's my problem. I have, a, I have a customer. It's a good customer, but, but she always waits until the last minute to place her order always and it drives me nuts and i don't want to offend her but i would like to gently convince her to please place your orders early earlier and make it easier on both of us do you, do you have any suggestions 
maybe uh, a lot of companies offer discounts if you get their order in early. And that's right. You can play that up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, your suppliers, they often uh, offer discounts or EQP for orders that get in early. And even more of a discount if they pay up front as mm. well. Right, right. If, if this is a super good customer, someone who you're doing a, a lot of business with, mm. maybe one thing you could do is, because it would be worth the time in, this in, in the case that they are a good customer, is to come up with a couple of um, really creative outside-the-box ideas mm -hmm. that could only be done with ample lead time mm. and go to her or him and say, um, this is, you know, these are some of the really super cool things we could do if you came to me a little earlier with with your deadlines and showing them her uh, them something tangible like that yeah. um could that could kind of be the carrot that says "Ooh, uh, maybe that's mm -hmm. what we will do that's right and i'd also say to um suggest a meeting with them at least twice a year or quarterly if you could get in there mm -hmm. um and go over their list of events that are are coming up and then you'll be proactive in that regard too and even send reminders you know you know you yeah have, keeping you know, your track of, of their problem Past child orders. children you know get mm -hmm. them send a blast out every once in a while right yeah, like for hey last year you ordered this much for this mm -hmm. um were you thinking about doing that again yeah mm -hmm. you know first quarter is not a bad time to do even if it's only once a year if mm -hmm. you do it in the first quarter a lot of times they're mapping out stuff or have stuff already mapped out and they might not be ready to order yet because we know that's a slower time so it, it you might have a little extra time on your hands get in there then and get the year planned right and don't just stick to things they did last year either yeah. um show them some things that you've done for other clients maybe you held a, a company picnic that they haven't done yet or something like that um incentive trips you you've helped out with give them other ideas as well okay all right hopefully all right. that helps stay in the great line. job thank you <laughs> you're welcome b-list my foot yeah b-list <laughs> right look at that we're just Fixing, yeah. fixing problems. <laughs> All right, Michael, you have um, some really great career advice, I hear. And that sounds like a segue. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so seven great pieces of uh, career advice that no one ever told you. Um, you know, uh, a couple of things that I walked away from from this article was uh, that I never thought to do before, and that was um, taking a tour of a facility. Um, when you're in an interview, it's, it can be very uh, nerve-wracking, and you're not sure what to ask, especially when it really comes down to, like, those questions for me. Um, portion of the interview um, asking to see where you're going to work matters a lot because you know you you never know you could walk into like this really glamorous looking lobby but then find out you're working in a coat closet mm -hmm. yeah um, because like you know, everyone's so quick to jump on a career because of just the state of the economy over the last several years and, and, and now we can take more time to be picky so you know go and see exactly where you're going to be doing what you're going to be doing that's a good mm -hmm. tip um, another great piece of advice is don't hide your failures Wear them with pride. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I fail. Put them on right on your sleeve. Um, no, uh, what companies look for, you know, everyone's going to go in and, and tout their benefits. I mean, no one's going to go into a job interview and be like, I'm terrible at this. Why am I even here? <laughs> um, but when you explain when something went wrong, it's how you rebuilt, you know, what has fallen. And um, because, you know, stuff's going to go wrong because we're people. Mm -hmm. We're people. Hey, you're and human, right, Chris? Yeah. People are. That's an advantages <laughs> reference that no one listening <laughs> here right. will get, but that's all right. Yeah. Continue. Cue song. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I was enjoying. That's fine. Go ahead. Oh, sing. Too far. <laughs> um, execution matters more than plans or advice. That's another good piece of advice. Um, how you go about getting, you know, sometimes the journey is more important than the destination. And again, it, people want to see how you accomplish goals, not exactly what the goals you accomplished. Right. It's not about winning the gold medal. It's 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 about training to get there. And um, finally, lie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> lie a lot. <laughs> well, All I, right. I want to jump on the you know the idea about the failures thing when um when, we, when at least when I, when I when I do interviews with like you know per, prospective employees, one mm -hmm. thing I ask them is that you know like what's one thing you want to you know improve on or what do you think is like a weakness? And mm -hmm. that always gives people pause, but really it's just um it's just an avenue for them to sort of sell themselves some more because you know that that's a chance to say well you know i was weak in this but i've, I've worked and improved it or i'm better at, at that mm -hmm. so that that's a that's a way to show you know a failure in your past but if addressing it making it better and show that you're you know you've improved yourself so mm -hmm. i think that's i think that's a good point there another great way um this is this is not on in the article this is just something that i personally found beneficial um when i'm in an interview i found it's really important to ask the person with whom you're interviewing Did i say that right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um thank you Perfect, um, perfectly actually <laughs> thank you he's a word guy yeah. um, is what their favorite part of the, what they like most about what they do and if they pause too long 
then then that might not be a place you want to work. Yeah, like the best thing point. if someone reacts really quickly with oh I like this oh I like that, um, that's a great sign. But um, <clears throat> if if otherwise, then I would I would give that pause. All great tips, guys. All right, we're going to pause for a message from our sponsor, Haynes. And when we come back, Joni will tell us what sentence will change your life. Haynes Branded Printware has a new website designed specifically for screen printers and promotional product distributors. HaynesInc.com features detailed product information and resources to help you make the most of Haynes t-shirts and fleece. For the first time, you can download high-res front and back hollows of every product in every color in the format and resolution you need. Apparel pages are organized by color and product line, so you can easily find exactly what you're looking for. In addition to high-res hollows, you will also find helpful sales tips on every product page. Each product is assigned a helpful return on investment scenario to illustrate the untapped return potential for you and your customers in every interaction. In our resources section, a dedicated return on investment page provides additional questions and insight to help you better understand how to meet your customers' needs with better products and better guidance. Visit HanesInc.com today for high-res hollows, sales tips, and many more resources. Oh, I feel so mellow now mm. <laughs> from that feng shui music. Hala. I always hear that. When I think Combination Hala. of Hala. feng shui and North Jersey accent. You can't <laughs> beat it. Yeah. Right on. Soprano zen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joan, what <laughs> one sentence will change your life? I want to know. I need your help, please. Oh, or wow. you could be like the fly and say, help me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Why is uh, that? Well, there are a lot of reasons why people don't ask for help, but the reality is we all need to overcome this hurdle, and we should do it immediately. We would all be more successful and happier if we had a helping hand. So most people look at asking for help as a weakness so the reasons are vast uh, from people wanting to take full credit on a project to thinking you'd be giving a colleague the upper hand by letting them know you can't do it all by yourself uh, but in reality the strongest and smartest are the ones who know how crucial the benefit of teamwork can be when needed and so you know you have to wrap around your ego and, and this one of the fastest way is you know to let your ego get in the way of, of asking for help mm -hmm. So how do you know when the right time is to ask for help? Um, asking for assistance in the workplace is a privilege and should be treated as such. Be sure to know your boundaries. Don't ask your boss to help with a menial task. Uh, and transversely, don't ask your employees to pick up your dry cleaning. Um, and when you seek out collaboration, make sure it's because you tru truly need the help and because you know the person you're asking is the perfect fit, ha right. you know, can help really help you. Um, and together you can create something with higher value uh, than what you were able to do alone. So, and this will benefit everyone. That's true. And you know what? The bottom line is people actually like to help. They mm -hmm. do. So, you know, yeah. ask. Exactly. I always ask. And I would say that that goes for like ma like managers asking their employees right. too. It's Definitely. not. It doesn't just travel uphill because mm -hmm. I think some. I think if you're managing sometimes and you ask and you ask for help, it's showing that you respect those employees That's that true. you value their input. And it's and it's kind of I don't want to say making you vulnerable. That's not the right word, but it's making it's more re relatable. Relatable. Right. That, thank you. That's that's and and that's like goes a long way toward just like office dynamics and stuff like that. That's so. very true. Yeah. All very true. And you learn more. I mean, you you know, your help if you're the manager and you're asking your employees. You I mean obviously they're going to right. be more involved. And, and everybody has their own right. expertise too, and their exactly. own their own strong points. So everybody ask for help. Um, CJ, you're going to tell us five. Qu no. You're going to tell us secret weapons every marketer needs, right? Yes, that's, okay, that's correct. Okay, go so for I, it. So I can't take credit for this. This is actually from Visually, which is a blog. Um, and it, basically the idea is that, you know, especially with small businesses, they have to juggle. Small business owners have to juggle so many different tasks. And marketing is a marketing is a difficult one, especially when they're so focused on selling. So, you, you know, you could hire a, a marketing agency or something like that. But that's expensive. But there's just a num number of tools that are available, really, that can help small business owners and marketers in, that are self-service and not too expensive. So there's a bunch of different programs here. I'll just I'll just go through a, f a few of them very quickly. So one is the idea of, you know, for web development to be able to develop your content management, your web pages. So so look to Wix, Squarespace, and also WordPress, which is a popular, uh, you know, blog format. But you can also do your your web pages on there as well. If you have you know PR needs, there's a bunch of different programs you can use. You can try Talk Walker Alerts. Also, Google Alerts is a very popular one. That basically 
anytime your company's mentioned, you'll get an alert. You can see, you know, if you're getting good mentions, bad mentions, whatever the case may be. Also, there's PR.co and Press King, and these help you actually create a press room on your website. So, you know, you want to market your business, create press releases, now you can house them all on your website. And uh, one more category, so social media, you know, now, you know, companies now have LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, all these different things. It might take too much time to do them all separately. So you can use things like Buffer, Hootsuite, and Edgar. So these all manage your social media posting schedule. You can schedule your posts in advance, and it also has a nice set of you know, data-driven analytics. You can see you know, how far your posts going, who are reading them, all those different things. So the point is, you know, there's all these programs that are basically either free or very inexpensive that can help out these small businesses. Great. Thanks, CJ. That's and awesome. all these um, programs and topics will be on our website at asicentral.com slash radio if you want more in-depth information. Um, I'm going to just take a couple seconds to give some Facebook Facebook feedback on our topic today. Lori O'Shea from Motivator says, for annoying customers, just try and remember everyone has bad days. Kill them with kindness and professionalism. Ryan Shade says, an annoying customer's money is as good as a non-annoying one. I can learn to deal with it. And Daniel... <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like this one from is Daniel what Lum. It is. Daniel Lum says, annoying customers enjoy a special handling fee tacked on. <laughs> if I have to put up with your shenanigans, it's going to cost you. Yeah, That's, that's a great tip. Yeah. And one more, Eric Campbell says, the principle of charity rules here. Always take the best version of what the person you are dealing with is trying to tell you and react accordingly. Assume that they are coming from a genuine place, listen carefully, and do your best to understand. Besides, it's about being your best self no matter what the other person is doing. Remember that you are the ambassador for your brand, and that extends everywhere. All great points from our Facebook I have a, I have a question fans. for you guys. Any, mm -hmm. Anytime you've done like, you know, an interview, any of your dealings with either customers or, or you know, companies, have you ever had to like, like choose somebody out for being like annoying or being like, it's like stepping out of line? Like, have you actually like confronted that person over the phone? Like a customer? Like, um, I mean, or, you know, a person you're for, interviewing. For, for us, for editorial, sometimes we, d we deal with these companies a lot, and sometimes right. they overstep their bounds. So, so I'm curious, has anybody actually like, ever, like, confronted one, like, over the phone? No, I like usually that? just get off the phone and tell everybody. <laughs> 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 yeah, I just run my mouth yeah. to anyone who will listen. I mean, right. like, I've worked mostly in marketing and in public relations and advertising, so, you know, l calling someone out on their stuff is genuinely... Yeah. Frowned upon. <laughs> Frowned yeah. Yeah, I think that's my that's my point though. Mm -hmm. Like, because sometimes you want to, if you feel like you want to say something, but at least I know for me, it's always like that. Don't yeah. don't, don't don't burn a bridge. If they're giving yeah. you really exactly. a problem, you can maybe address it by email. But especially when you're you're working with you know, these people in the industry all the, all the time, just mm -hmm. having something come to a head, I'll, I don't think this does you like any good. And so, mm -hmm. like that Facebook comment said, you know, kill them with kindness. That's like right. sort of the text. Yeah, like yeah and, they, and they might be work a shift bar a day. once in a while. <laughs> I'll Honest, change your bar. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> right honestly, um, I don't know if you do, CJ, but as the editor of a magazine, I get a lot of uh, non-fan mail. Yes. Um, I, I've seen some of your non-fan mail. You've seen <laughs> them. And what I do is kill them with kindness, too. Blah, blah, blah. I understand. And right right away, they send an, another email. You respond email, to like, it? Oh, yeah, I do. Wow. I do. What about comments? Because I just don't even look at comments. Like, if I want to... You know, like, let me help you with the, having a good day. Let me help you with that, internet commenters. Like, that's... Yeah. Ooh. I know. <laughs> but, but I do address them. I do address them and their concerns, and they usually are so sweet afterwards. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't even read that stuff because it was just the quickest way to depression. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how you start drinking in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you need an All excuse? Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chris, you're going to say, tell us five questions to ask when your marketing isn't working. All right. First one is, is your execution consistent? So uh, take your social media platforms. Um, are, are you sometimes posting content that's that's really good and what your audience wants and then your other times just chucking stuff up there that's that that's junk so look at look at your posts over the course of say a, a couple months and kind of analyze what's what's good and what's mm -hmm. not um that's kind of dovetails into this the second point which is um is is your content relevant um you you may be sharing stuff that's that's of interest to you or that you think may be of interest to your audience but is it really? And um, one of the ways that you can um, find out if it is is there's a lot of uh, analytics tools out there that can um, kind of monitor what's gauging, what's actually garnering interest on your social mm -hmm. media platforms. And if you use those analytics, then you could start to tailor content based on that. Um, another thing you could do is you, you can analyze if you're promoting through the right channels, and that would be both um, social media channels online, but then also offline things as well. Um, 
in the in the instance of social media, you don't have to necessarily have a presence on Twitter and Pinterest and Facebook and every single one of them. What you might want to do is experiment with a few and see where you're getting your most traction mm -hmm. and how your audience or which platform your audience likes to get its information from you from and then focus on on that. Um, uh, another one would be are are you listening to to your audience? Um, you know nowadays, the, the old the old media and marketing model was media slash marketer creates something and puts it out into the world. It's different nowadays. It's a much more interactive and circular process, and you want to incorporate feedback from your audience into in, in into your marketing to make it relevant to them. Um, finally, um, <coughs> steal from your competitor. You want to ask yourself what are your competitors doing right? Um, analyze what they're doing, and then adapt what they do well and effective to to your situation without it being a total obvious ripoff. True. All right. All right. Great points. Mm -hmm. So, Joan, we all want to write better emails that actually get opened That's and read. That's important. So give us right. some tips. Well, number one, keep it short. Uh, Mark Twain once said, if I had more time, I would have written you a shorter email. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't really say that, but he probably said letter. But anyway. The ghost of Mark Twain, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what Newton said. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, keep your word count low. Uh, just as you, your tweets are under 140 characters, keep your emails under 150 words. Um, like, a, you know, an example would be... It's there's so a hard. Chris is <laughs> biting his so tongue hard. over there. Oh, Wait, yeah. I'm like the Tolstoy of emails. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it got war and peace. But yeah, go yes. ahead. Sorry. <laughs> because everyone's really excited to get a super long email. I know I no, am. I saw a man that had I delete them. I delete them too, but I just can't help myself. They had, it was a, a person <laughs> in a doctor's uh, waiting uh, waiting room and they said this isn't a good sign and it was war and peace the book was <laughs> oh god <laughs> but um for example uh if you ever have a complaint about amazon you're welcome to email jeff bezos directly and he in turns he'll respond and if he f he'll if it merits a response he'll forward it to a relevant employee with a single addition the only thing he has on there is a question mark mm -hmm. and they respond you know right so. Uh, another point is to be direct. Get to the point. Delete adjectives and adverbs. Um, you know, then you, if you can't follow rule number one and keep your emails short, at least include a brief summary at the top and indicate whatever action is required. Uh, edit is really yeah. yes. <laughs> edit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Edit yourself. What was it? Coco Chanel said, "Always take one thing off." Yes. Like when you check in. That's <laughs> Are you going to do that now? <laughs> Was that a proposal? Or <laughs> <laughs> so, and then reply qu quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to, here's an example here. Um, s last year, Snapchat at CEO Evan Spiegel tweeted some of the first emails he had traded with Mark Zuckerberg before turning down a reported $3 billion takeover. Most interesting from these is how short and fast these introductory messages were. And Zuckerberg's first 46-word email came at 6.23. Spiegel replied a half hour later with 19 words, plus an emoticon. <laughs> 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 and Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg replied again with just 14 words three hours later. So this was like a humongous deal. Right. I mean, look, you know, right. this is where we are now, you know. Mm -hmm. so, and then, uh, re dude, wanna buy my phone? <laughs> <laughs> Happy face. Totes. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> right on, man. Sounds good. <laughs> Totes, lol. <laughs> Smiley emo emoji. So, so yeah. all right, all yeah. great tips. So we're all gonna write okay. excellent emails on this amazing day, right, John? Exactly. All right, we're gonna pause for another um, sponsorship ad, and then we'll be back with nine things successful people won't do. At ASI, we know that education is the key to success, so we're excited to announce our newly reimagined online learning center. Log in and test the all-new intuitive interface. Share photos, stories, and communicate with other ASI members who are learning along with you. Expand your knowledge with wikis, discussion boards, and more than 350 courses which include valuable marketing and sales information. And for your convenience, the Online Learning Center now uses a single sign-on access like your other ASI services. Best of all, it's free. Become an industry expert and see what's new on the ASI Online Learning Center at www.asicentral.com slash online learning. 
Okay, Michael, uh, give us some things successful people will not do. I probably do every single one of them. <laughs> I was going to say, this is kind of ironic that I'm reading these because I uh, – no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, so um, one, of the, one of the top things that successful people do is they don't forget. And um, I don't just mean like to call you back. I mean, they don't forget things that happen. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, you know, it, it is important to forgive, but it's, not, it, it's, it's more important to not forget. So if something goes wrong in a business transaction, like they'll always keep in the back of their mind and make future decisions based on those actions, but and always keep a game face. So, so as to not create hostility. Um, they don't uh, expect perfection because that is an impossible task. If you're expecting perfection from anybody, you're always going to be let down. Can you talk to our boss about that? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> that, is, that is not something I'm going to do. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't write this article. We should, that's, a great, that's a great point to bring up. Um, see, they don't, they don't hang on problems. They're not going to um, – something goes wrong, it goes wrong. And it kind of goes back to forgiving but not forgetting. Like they right. remember when something goes wrong, but mm -hmm. they remember in a functional way, not in a vengeful blackmail sort of way. <laughs> um, maybe they do. I don't know. Everyone's different. <laughs> Takes all kinds. Um, and uh, that being said, too, is also successful people don't live in the past. They move forward. Everyone's forward-looking. I'm running out of words. This coffee is not working. How about coward? Did I coward. Do coward? Yeah, They're there looking coward. They're looking towards the nearest cow. We brought that full circle. See what she did there? Um, and uh, most importantly, they don't hang around negative people. Negativity um, is not the tree that brings fruit. Um, negativity is just only going to slow things up. Like no one ever like, – it's, it's not a foundation for successful business mm -hmm. decisions. That's like everyone's true. always looking um, – Again, forward, coward. <laughs> Everyone's looking to look towards the cow. Very good. <laughs> Very good, Michael. And on the topic, no, it wasn't. But on the topic you. of um, <laughs> seeking perfection, perfection means different things to different people. So there's not going to be one, one set. That's true. There is no know, one, one type of perfection. That's right. But, um, so stop looking for it, people. All right, Chris, we have time for your topic, um, mm -hmm. and then we're going to wrap it up with our favorite things. But you have seven lessons from the richest people. Yeah, I'll be quick. Uh, so Bill Gates advises, don't be afraid of growth. You want to embrace it and strategize for how to manage it. Uh, Steve Jobs says, y you know, for him, money wasn't the thing. He, we are right. But um, <laughs> he says he, uh, he, what was important to him was seeking to make a difference for the better and to do something wonderful, and he advises you to do the same. Um, Rocky, Sylvester Stallone, apparently he's one of the richest A fictional the character yes. has <laughs> advice for you. Yes. <laughs> he's on the steps of City Hall. But anyhow, um, he's a, he says, be persistent and uh, keep plugging away. He, he attributes his, to, his success to just never stopping, to just keep going after his dream. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Alico Dan Goti. Do you know who that is? No. I don't either, but no. apparently Does he's, anyone? Very, he's very rich. I'd like to he, get to he, know he, him. He, um, is he the guy from Scarface? <laughs> <laughs> sure sounds like. He advises, be ambitious. He actually says, if you don't have ambi ambition, you shouldn't even be alive, which seems a little hmm. seems a little harsh, but he says, you know, if, if you're ambitious and you're driven and you want to succeed, you know, you'll work to make that happen. Another one is um, you want to work hard and don't be afraid of hard work. Um, it's, it sounds very simple, but a lot of people do, especially in this day and age, want to just kind of have it fall in their laps. And, um, you know, that's not how you're going to become one of the seven richest people in the world. Uh, <laughs> you want to also embrace competition because embracing competition will make you better. And then you want to focus on managing your money smartly you may make a lot of money but if you lose it you know if you're making a million but you're sp having to pay a million one right you're you're still a dollar behind right. so um so work to make your money work for you very good thank you cj i mean chris <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome kathy you're welcome <laughs> I'll just go to my closet now because people don't even know my name. <laughs> I knew it was one of the C names. I can't believe those emails from princes in foreign lands were on you that list. You are getting a 500 word a email of... after this. <laughs> Delete. Yeah. All right, let's wrap this. <laughs> just make it short. Yeah. Let's yeah. wrap this train wreck up with our favorite things. Let's start with CJ since he's on my mind. <laughs> Uh, as Shetty just revealed their fall collection, they always have great fleece pieces, and so they have a new fleece jacket. It's got a launch fabric with a contrast color on the zippers and seams, so it's available from As Shitty ASI 37153. Very good. How about you, Joan? I love Yankee candles. This is Yankee candle oh, season, too. especially pumpkin spice. So girly. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Actually, real quick story. I have something spilled in my car. I could really use – I got in the, my car this morning, and 
It smelled hard. It smelled like the cow, <laughs> cow. from cow work. Is there a dead body in your truck? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, See the North Jersey girl. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, Go ahead. Large What's with all the shovels, Kathy? <laughs> Yankee Candle with two wicks. No. Ooh. From Yankee Candle, ASI 98756. Two wicks. Very good. Two wicks. How about you, Better than Chris? <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> uh, mine is a, a water-repellent track jacket. It's um, product number TM12348. It's from Trimark, powered by Leeds, 66888. And what makes it cool is that it's it's really just the perfect fall item for coaches, teams, um, wellness programs for that matter, too. It's got some nice contrast piping on it. Sporty and fun. Check it out. Very nice. And Michael Kelly. Uh, my favorite thing, well, things, I should say, um, is the inflatable animals from Gen Creations. <laughs> <laughs> Come is again? Is there an inflatable cow in there? <laughs> There is. There's also. I have a brontosaurus actually at my desk. But hold on, let me. I'm not done plugging the company. Jet yeah. Creations Inc. ISI six three three four zero. I, I'm not saying this. <laughs> he genuinely no, likes this product. I don't have a lot of friends, <laughs> so you know, in case you want to have tea sometimes parties, sometimes you need someone to talk and to. Yeah, sometimes you need someone to talk all to. All right, we're all out of time, people. Oh, thank thank God. 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 Next week, the regular crew will be back, and we'll see you next Tuesday, 10:30 a.m. Join us.